I got started on this on a completely different question, which has nothing to do with the talk, but uh, uh, the, the subject, but it's a nice introduction. I was uh, approached by a student in quantum mechanics who had this question. What happens if you shoot a pion beam through, the, through a potential barrier? We know what happens, that part of it is reflected and part of it goes through. But a pion is an unstable particle, and it decays. What is the probability that it decays while it's going through the barrier? Because uh, we know that a relativistic particle has a time duration, and uh, the, uh, lo the decay rate is slower when it's moving, when it has a high momentum. But what happens if it has an imaginary momentum? And so we looked into this problem, and then after uh, we, we solved it, we said, well, suppose we now put a magnetic field in the barrier. Uh, and then it got complicated. And at that point, I started to think differently. I said, hey, this is interesting, but why do we need the barrier? Suppose you have... Uh, a, uh, an electron just going through a slab uh, where there's a magnetic field and you end up with all these problems that David Gross talked uh, about of uh, is the vector potential real or just a mathematical device and is there redundance uh, and all that so uh, um, uh, as uh, uh, Murray Peskin has pointed out, let's, uh, let me see if this thing works. Uh, the the, uh, uh, the Coulomb field of the elect, uh, electron en enters the uh, magnetic field, and there's ang momentum and angular momentum in the cross fields. And these are described by the use of the vector potential at the position of the electron. But, but the pointing vector of the crossed fields goes far, out far beyond the electron's position. Uh, so somehow the vector potential at the electron's position knows about the pointing vector far away. This is a question. And when I gave this, showed my example to Dave Jackson. He didn't believe it, and he had to calculate it himself to see uh, that it was right. And then he asked me to allow this example in the new uh, edition of uh, uh, his book's uh, classical uh, uh, electrodynamics. supposed to sorry oh, what uh -oh. what is this just press cancel yeah. just press cancel okay and just roll yep. oh okay so uh, <coughs> it, oh here we are uh, uh I want it back here so uh, I didn't draw the, the picture, but I think that it's simple enough so you'll just see it. We, we have an electron coming in. There's a, these lines are supposed to be straight. There's a magnetic field perpendicular with from X, Z equals minus A to Z equals plus A. And we know, all know what happens. The, Electron goes to the magnetic field, there's a Lorentz force, and it gets deflected. And this is something that any student can calculate and get the right answer. But then when you start thinking about it, uh, 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 you immediately think of it with some kind of theoretical picture. And there you see right away that uh, uh, the, the magnetic field is in this direction. It's the, the, 
Hamiltonian, the interaction, everything is invariant under translations in the y direction. So momentum, uh, the momentum in the y direction has to be conserved. But it manifestly is not conserved in motion of the electron because here it has the, the <coughs> momentum, uh, y component of momentum is zero and there it is finite. So where does this extra momentum come from? And the point is that it's easy to resolve this paradox, but the, what the point is, uh, you find that there are two ways of doing it, which seem to be completely different, but they must be related. One is that it is locally in the vector potential at the position of the electron. And uh, that, of course, uh, you, you calculate it, and, and it, it gives you the right answer. The other one is to say, well, uh, when the electron is outside, uh, uh, its field still goes through the, uh, uh, the magnetic field in this lab, and therefore there's a pointing vector, and there is uh, a momentum. <laughs> And you can calculate the momentum by uh, integrating this uh, pointing vector over the whole slab from x and y going from minus infinity to plus infinity, and you come out with the same answer. But somehow, this depends on knowing the pointing vector all the way out to infinity. It seems to be completely non-local. And uh, and so uh, there is the question of how the uh, value of the local value of the vector potential is uh, uh, and uh, and that is that is really the. Uh, the problem uh, which asks if, if you want to say the uh, vector potential is some mathematical device, uh, you can get everything that will be measured without using the vector potential. But in order to conserve momentum, you have to include fields that go out to infinity. and. Uh, that uh, somehow doesn't sound reasonable. And so the question is, using the vector potential at the point of the electron gives you a local description of everything you need. But if you don't want to use the vector potential, you can do it too. But now you have to have fields uh, going through the slab uh, uh, out to infinity. And uh, actually, well, I think that really says it all. I mean, I can, you, you can w calculate it very easily. The, uh, the Lorentz force on the uh, on the electron, gives you a potential, gives you a uh, uh, momentum change in the y direction, which is just the usual of v cross b, and it ends up by just giving you essentially the flux uh, uh, through the slab from uh, minus a to plus a. If you now put at the change in the vector potential going through the slab, well, you do the same kind of integral and uh, you get the same answer, I mean, uh, uh, with the opposite sign. Uh, uh, I'm not sure, uh, I, I know that they, they have to be opposite sign, but uh, if I've made mistakes in signs I'm, uh, uh, in this calculation, I made an even number and I get the right answer. Uh, 
And then, of course, there's a change in the pointing vector. And that's simply uh, EXBY integrated over, over everything. It's a, it's a more complicated integral, but, uh, but it works and gives you the right answer. So that uh, is essentially uh, the point I'm trying to make, that uh, all of these questions that uh, David Gross and others have added, asked can be seen in this simple model. And if you can understand these various connections in this simple model, uh, you can learn a, uh, a lot about more general things. I think that's, that's it. I ended up uh, just doing the classical thing because there is enough things to be understood in the, in the classical problem. It's a, it's the one that has just come out. Uh, the last one that has come out. It's an exercise. It's uh, somewhere. I mean, he where he talks about the momentum in the field, and uh, he didn't believe when I first uh, said it that you could easily actually calculate the momentum in the field and it would give you the right answer for a simple problem like this. Thank you.